Welcome to this C1 booster session on solving simultaneous equations algebraically. Now, to understand what's going on first, though, I think we've got to look at the uh, graphical representation. So here we've got a ellipse. Now, you're not expected to be able to draw an ellipse uh, on, on the C1 syllabus. Now, what I'm able to tell you is no matter where I am on my ellipse here, you can see I'm just sort of orbiting um, around, no matter where you are, the relationship between the x and the y coordinate is always, always 3x squared minus xy plus y squared equals 36, no matter where I am on here. Okay, that. This is this sort of links the geometry and the, the algebra together with this equation. And no matter where you are on this line, it is always true to say that if you take the x coordinate and times it by minus one and then add two times the y coordinate, you'll always get ten as your answer, no matter where you are on the line. Now what I'm interested in today is these rather special points. And they're special, of course, because they happen to be on the ellipse and they happen to be on the line. And when we say we're going to solve equations simultaneously, what we really mean is that we're going to try and find these coordinates that actually fit, the, uh, fit both, that satisfy both equations. So we basically take advantage of the fact that we know that they're the, the, the coordinates are on both the, the line and the curve. So let me go to my smart board file here. So we're solving these simultaneously. So we've got the complicated ellipse equation. And what we're going to do is do an algebraic substitution because I know that this relationship is true at my points A and B, but I also know that this relationship is going to be true. So I'm just going to rearrange this if I minus x from both sides, sorry, add x to both sides, I get that. And if I minus 10 from both sides, I get that. So I also know that this relationship is true at the two points in question. So what that's going to allow me to do is write and capture x in a different way. I, instead of writing that x now, I'm going to write it as 2y minus 10, because I can, because I know that it's true at those two coordinates. So therefore, rewriting my complicated equation, I'm going to replace the x with a 2y minus 10 and I still need to square that as normal so that's 3x squared okay and then moving on to the next one I've got minus x so I'm going to write x though as this and I times by y there and I've got the plus y squared and the 36 as normal now why that is a very good move is I now have an equation with just one unknown which means that I can solve it. I've eliminated one of my variables. I've eliminated x in this case. We could have, if we wished, made y the subject. But if you think about what you'd, you, you'd get there, you'd get fractions, which is not desirable. The algebra will be that bit more complicated. So multiplying out here, uh, I'm just going to write this as a double bracket. And then I can think about accurately doing that on the next line. Now, looking at this bit here, I have 2y times y, so 2y squared. But I've got to be very careful with the signs. It's a positive times a positive, so everything positive so far. But when you times by this negative, it will become a negative. Next, we have 10 times y. Now, it's looking initially like it's going to be a negative, because the signs are different there. But then when you times it by the negative here, um, it's actually going to be a positive overall. It might have been nicer in some ways if the y would have gone there. It would have been easier to see what was going on. But never mind. Uh, moving on, we've still got our y squared. And that equals 36. Now, you've got to be careful here, because yes, I have to expand this out, a bit of work to do there, but I've got to bear in mind that everything is going to get times by that 3. 
So what I'm going to do is just open up a free here and open up some brackets. And I'm going to do 2 times 2. And it's a y times a y as well. And then on the outer here, we have a negative 20y. And on the inner, we have a additional negative 20y. So that lands us on negative 40y. And then we've got 10 times 10. And the signs were different there, so positive. And then we've still got all of this. That's maybe I could have just gathered up my uh, y squared there, but never mind. Right, on the next line, I'm just going to expand this bracket out. So it times in by everything by 3 there. So we've got 12y squared, a minus 120y, and a plus 300. And we've still got to gather it up here. I might just do a little bit of work here. Look, you can see you've got minus y squared there. Okay, but the main bit of the gathering up is going to be on the next line. So y squared, we've got that and that. So 11y squared. Normal y terms, we have this and this. So that's negative 110y. And in terms of normal numbers, we've just got the 300 on the left-hand side at least. But we do have a number over here. So I might just take that across now. So minusing 36 off of both sides lands you on, well, if you minus 30 off of the 300, you're on 270. But minus a further 6 lands you on that number. So uh, we've got a quadratic. Now I suspect that this will factorise. And the reason being, it does seem that we're going to get nice solutions. We, we've seen that from our graphical drawing. So it should factorize and it looks quite complicated there but let's just see if we can simplify and divide through our equation and well if anything's going to work hopefully we can divide through by 11 which i can see we can do that there and there but the question is does 11 go into here well it goes into 26 twice remainder four then it goes into 44 four times so yes it will it will go in 24 times so do look to see if there are any common factors that we can divide through by. So dividing everything by 11. And 0 divided by 11. And then hopefully this will factorise. If it does, we'll need a y there and there. And let's think about breaking 24 down. Just, we could have 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6, and I think I can stop there. Now, all of them will give me my 24, but which could possibly give a 10. And actually, I can see that possibly working, and also that possibly working, because both of them could give a 10. But if you look at the signs, you've got a positive 24, so both signs have to be the same. And but because we've got a negative 10 there, they're going to have to both be negatives. So actually that one would give a negative 14. So it's the 4 and the 6 that we need. And so if we met the first bracket equals 0, it would need y to equal 4. It's worth just looking now what the x value would be. Well, that would be 2 times 4 minus 10, so x would equal 2. Uh, um, apologies, it would equal negative 2. It would be 8 minus 10. And looking at the second bracket here, in order to make that equal to 0, y would need to equal 6. And when y equals 6, x equals 2. So that gives us our two coordinates. Uh, I could write them as coordinates. You know, we could write it as negative 2, 4, or 2, 6. Normally when it says just solve them, though, you'd be expected to write your answers like this.